Hi, this is the Deck Network, and I'm your host, Mike Danzilio, and we have Matt from WBAB Radio here, who is our, he's working on a deck that a person with no carpentry experience can do. Matt, how's the project coming? It's definitely coming along. We're here. We're, uh, we're up to the footing stage of the project, and definitely the digging wasn't easy, but digging builds character, I'm finding out here, okay. Mike, and it's, uh, it's been quite the, the effort so far, but um, it seems like right now we're uh, rounding the end of the first step of getting this deck up and erected, and that's with the footage. Right, let's take a little uh, look at the video of the mat putting these footings in, and uh, then we'll comment on it afterwards. Hi, we're at Matt's house. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm all right. I'm yeah? getting ready for okay. this uh, project here. Right, I'm, I'm over at Matt's house, and we're laying out the footings for his deck. So. Uh, if you want to take a look at this, we have uh, all the strings up. We made some square lines to the house. We uh, we put the strings where we want the beams to go, and then we have lines square from the house. But this is going to be the center of where we want these sauna tubes to go, or for the footings. And from what I understand, this is kind of the blueprint of what the deck's going to yeah, be. Yeah, this this is this is how we're going to start. Now, there are ways that we could do these decks easier. But that's not what we want to do. We want to make it so that we do it correctly and the viewers get to see different ways of doing these decks. They all come out the same, but again, the most important part is, is that it's safe and strong and of course to code. So what we're going, we have a, uh, a sauna tube footing here, which is a cardboard footing. It's uh, in Long Island where we are, the code is three foot down, but we want to have about a four foot, excuse me, four inches above the ground. So when this decomposes, that's biodegradable, so it'll be gone a year or so. No carbon footprint. Yes, so that, uh, well, the cement is uh, hazardous waste, yes. But uh, you want to have your, your, the top of your footing about four inches above the ground. You always want to keep your, your posts, your, your supports and your 4 by 4 is out of the ground or out of the, anywhere where the water can infiltrate it and cause a it could cause it to rot. So we're going to use this uh, this is made by Simpson it's called a PB44Z it has the little squiggles on the bottom that's going to go into the cement and when that hardens that's not going anywhere that's the beginning of our solid connection from the ground up to the frame of the deck. Are you ready Matt? So you're telling me I gotta bury this thing up until four inches of the tube. You certainly do. And I gotta do that two, four, six, eight, eight times. Eight times. So uh, I ate my Wheaties this morning. Yeah. So well, you may, it's gonna take you more than one day to do this. We're gonna get you a uh, a lightweight jackhammer to get through some of this uh, concrete over here. But uh, can I just say goodbye to my old platform of a deck over okay. there? She's kind of going on her final yeah, voyage. We smashed that thing out. We that thing right out of the dirt there. That, that went down in less than two minutes. All right, All right well, that's it. We'll see you soon. Okay, got it. Okay, okay. Hi, we're at Matt's house. Matt, what's doing? No, nah, not much, man. These arms are retired. Uh, we're just finishing up the footings here. Okay, two weeks to do the footings. Eight right. footings, 40 inches down. I like how you just breeze over. Like, yeah, we'll just dig them out real quick. Like I'm building a sandcastle at the beach. That was a lot of digging going on here. Yeah, there's a, it, to, to do these things correctly, it's a lot of work. I mean, of course, you got to have a good foundation to build anything on. Yep. So these are here. He asked me to come down because he was getting a little nervous because he thought they were in the wrong spot. But of course, they're exactly where they need to be. And originally. We were going to use these, uh, this footing, this type of post support here. And this is basically what we're going to be connecting the, uh, the posts of the deck to the cement? Yes, because we want to have a solid connection from the ground all the way up to the deck. Okay. So what we've, uh, after speaking with my friend Brett from Simpson, and if you saw a Deck Network video recently with uh, Brett was on there, he said that he likes these because it gives these one inch standoff and we're going to use this anchor bolt. So what, um, Mike? Why are you being so standoffish? Got well, we're it. just it's a trying. Joke. Sorry. Got so it. what we're trying to going to do is this is going to go right in the in the cement here, and it's going to stick up about just under an inch. It's going to be right in the center of where these two strings intersect. Then we're going to put the bolt right through this, right through there, bolt it in, and we got a good solid connection. Now, when do I backfill in the uh, forms? Is that after I they put those in, done. or should I do that right now? They could be done now. I mean, okay. they, yeah, you're all set, and uh, that's fine. 
It looks good. Again, again, it's a lot of work, isn't it? You ain't kidding. You ain't kidding. But it's going to be uh, that much more rewarding, I think, when we get it all done. And uh, I remember in the first video, you said that I asked you, Mike, what's the hardest part of building the deck? And you said, you're going to say every part is the toughest as you're going through it. <laughs> and it's going to be tough to beat the footings because that was a whole hell of a lot of work. Okay. All right. That's great. Okay. We'll. Uh... All right. That's that was it. some good stuff right there. What was I wearing in that first video, Mike? What was up with that you ensemble? Know, that first video was 9 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. <laughs> and even Kevin from uh, Blue Star said, Mike, you look like you're in slow motion. <laughs> because I, my body is geared to rest on Sundays. That's because it. I work six and sometimes seven days a week. So uh, I, I look a little is. slow on that. So tell us, how was your experience putting footings in? So far, so good. Um, uh, I'm... Well, I'm almost done with uh, with that part of it, and uh, I'm looking forward to the framing portion of it, which will be our next video. If you haven't seen the initial video of us getting started, I highly recommend you go back. It's kind of like a trilogy here of what we're doing and building this deck. It's going to be something like a uh, reality show, some similar to on the Science Channel, where they have yeah. an idiot abroad, where this guy <laughs> right from England goes all over the world, and he really does. They claim that he is reluctant to, to do anything, yeah. and so they send him all over the world, and they put him in these these situations that he's not really comfortable in. But and that's what I am here. Or maybe the show. So you think you can deck or something yeah, like yeah. that? I can see that. Now, isn't it so important with the footings and tubes? Didn't you have an example? Yeah. Of, okay. Uh, About eight years ago. Now, before there was video blogs, there was blogs, and before there was blogs, we just had websites. And I used to write about decks. I've been doing that for over 10 years and I received a, a uh, package one day from a gentleman in from Rhode Island and it had about 20 photographs and he had uh, reports from engineers because his deck he had just built the deck and over the winter the photographs showed that all of the hardware underneath the deck all of his connections his uh, hurricane ties his connections from his 4x4s to his beams were all torn and, and people had different uh, ideas on why this happened. So I looked at it for a few days, and then one night, I, I, as I usually do, I had my aha moment. And so I called him up, and I asked him about the footings. And he said, well, here in Rhode Island, it gets cold. And I said, yes, I'm familiar with that. He said, it's 42 inches down. I said, well, tell me about the sauna tubes. He said, well, we didn't use sauna tubes. We just dug the hole and filled it up with concrete. I said, well, that was the problem right there. What happens if you have a, a soil situation that's not sandy? So if it's sandy, the water will percolate through. If it has some clay or other materials in it, it's going to hold water. And we know when water freezes, it expands. So if you have 40 or 36 inches of soil with water in it and you get a real cold winter, like we had that winter, what it did was it grabbed the soil, grabbed the rough exterior of the post support, the footing itself, and just of the raised, concrete. Yeah, the concrete okay. just picked it right up, and it tore the all of his hardware underneath. So I think that what he did was he had to go and replace all of his footings, and that was it. What so, are the soil conditions on Long Island? Is it similar to well, uh, Rhode Island? It's or? a little different. We have. Uh, it's a little sandy in areas, but there is clay in other areas. But you can't really tell until you get in there. So we always, it's better to err on the side of caution. So you dig your, your footings down the proper depth, use the proper post supports, because when they decompose, it leaves a nice smooth tube. And when the ground heaves, which it will, it has nothing to grab to. Oh, because it's smooth on the exterior. Yes. You're saying where if you don't use the tube, it's going to be rough and give uh, some surface area for, yes. the, for it to grab onto. Okay, so back to the, on the post supports. We changed our post support. We wanted one with a little standoff on it. Of course, Matt had some sort of comment some about Some sort of bad deck joke. That that was fine. And uh, I'm looking for anybody that has any comments about the post supports and the sauna tubes. You can, of course, uh, write me at Mike at the Deck Network. I get a lot of emails and photographs. I have a bunch of uh, videos or pictures of segments and videos and There's pictures a ton of that content are, there. That I are, find myself referencing the website while I'm going through this. If yeah, I have a question, yeah. I'll just see, and uh, Mike covers it in one of the videos, so it's so really comprehensive. Our next step is that we're going to build the frame. Now I'm going to go over to Matt's house. I may bring a few of uh, guys that work for me to give some them. ringers. To yeah, come just and stand to, well, in not them. really. You're going to build the deck, but <laughs> we're going to lay it out. I'm going to do all the 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 the, the, the outline of the deck. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to lay out all the joists because. Again, if you watch earlier what I said, I said we don't want to do it the easiest way. We want to do it so that you, the viewer, sees as many different situations as possible. So we're, that's why we built the deck 22 feet because I wanted to use 16s and 6s. It would have been just, it would have been easier just to make it 20 foot and just use straight 20s. But we want to have a break in it to show this proper ways of joining the deck. And uh, so that's our next. That's what's up on our. Uh, what's on deck? 
for but I'm chat. That was a yeah, good one for the uh, the Deck Network and our segment, which has not been named yet. I still like the name. Uh, Pretty boy smashes his thumb, but uh, we'll hasn't see. Hasn't happened yet. It hasn't happened yet because he hasn't, myself yeah, he hasn't had a hammer in his hand either. So tell us about the experience with the lightweight jackhammer. Oh, the lightweight jackhammer. We actually have some footage that we can show you in the next video. It, the thing peeled right through my patio, and it was still tough. I had to get through some rebar, and they were actually uh, they must have laid the patio twice because if, if you yeah, saw there was it, layers on it. There was a couple different layers. So to get through that with a standard sledgehammer, I would have been there all day. But uh, with the, the holes that we already had marked on the cement, I was able to chip away on it. At it. Obviously, the post hole digger came into play, but it made the job a lot easier. I'm finding that with this sort of thing, having the right tools for the job makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, because usually, if you're not using the right thing, it's, uh, it tools, makes it a lot tougher. Tools make all the difference, but experience on how to use the tools also helps. That's all right, right that's it for this one. The next video with Matt is going to be on the frame, and uh, we'll see you then. Have a great day. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye.